song, a hymn of the church that we're going to sing before we go into the word. Uh, because I want us all to be able to worship and sing together. Oh, you know it. The lyrics of the song say, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found.
Father God, we thank you now for this very moment. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. We need you. We can't make it without you. Have your way, Holy Spirit. There we'll find a pericope of scripture starting at verse number 15. That will act as the second part in our preaching series on stewardship. Are you there? Amen. The word of the Lord reads this way. Beware false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are raving wolves ye shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works and then will I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity the grass withered the flower thereof faded away but the word of our Lord shall stand forever you may be seated in the very presence of the Lord quickly this morning house of prayer I want to talk to you from the topic stop picking on me Stop picking on me. A tree that is in season bears fruit. But in order for that fruit to be good to eat, that tree needed fertilization when it was not in season. That tree, my brothers and sisters, had to be a good steward of what was around it. That tree had to be planted in good soil. And that good soil had to have good fertilizer around it. Now, there's different types of fertilizer. There's fertilizer that you can go and buy from the store. 
uh, that fertilizer can be put around a tree or plant and it brings nourishment. But then there are other types of fertilizer that come in a more natural sort of way. And, and, and what happens to a tree in the middle of the forest? And you're saying there's nobody there to water it. There's nobody there to fertilize it. How in the world can a, a fruit tree in the middle of the forest bring forth good fruit fruit when nobody is there to nurture it? And my answer to you this morning is God nurtures everything he makes. There are natural ways to fertilize a tree that it brings forth good fruit. My brothers and sisters, we not all uh, have been brought up in the same way, under the same doctrine, with the same understanding. Therefore, God has made the word of God so simple that even a child could understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rather than trying to understand through God through his word. Many times, my brothers and sisters, we try to understand God through our mind. Many times we feel like the word of God is literally picking on us. And our response to God is, God, why are you always picking on me? Why is it always my body hurting? Why is it always my family in trouble? Why is it always me going through things? Why do people come bother me because I don't bother nobody? God, why is it that every time I try to do good, evil is present on every hand? God, why is it that every time I turn around and I'm looking for a blessing, I run into trouble? Stop picking on me. Can I tell you? That you just got to change the way you see getting picked on. Uh, I thank God that he picks on me. Because that tells me that the fruit that's hanging on my tree must be good fruit. If God is taking enough time just to pick on me. And I need to tell somebody this morning that there is an adversary. And the adversary is Satan. Satan goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But Jesus said, be of good courage, y'all. Don't trip, don't flip your wig off. Because he says, I've already conquered the world. And he said, you can celebrate that even though there is an enemy, you got to understand I've already overcome the enemy. You can't allow yourself to get so down and distraught with God that you lose hope. You have to be a good steward over your mind. A good steward over your heart. And a good steward over your body. You've got to watch what you allow people to speak into your ear gate. You've got to watch what you allow people to speak into your life. Look, I, I, even if you're sick, you ain't dead. And, and even if you're hurting, you can still move around and have the ability of your knees. Look, I don't care how far down you are. God's arms are so long, he can reach way down and pick you up. You've got to watch what you allow people to speak into your life. I don't care if you don't have no faith. You being faithless don't have nothing to do with me. Because I believe God can do exceeding abundantly above more than I could ever ask or think. I, what my situation is is not relying upon your faith. It's relying upon my trust and my faith in God. And I need to know, do I have at least three or four people in here who say I trust in God? Wherever I may be, out on the land or on the storm and see no pillows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly father. He watches over me. I don't have to be concerned. I don't have to be worried. All I have to do is trust in the Lord. With all my heart. And lean not to my own understanding. But in all my ways acknowledge him and who helps me. He directs my path. Walk with me around the text. How so prayer Jesus begins here in verse number 15 by saying, the word beware, watch out for, look out for, be on the lookout for somebody. Yeah. Saying that somebody are, uh, those somebodies are false prophets. 
He said those false prophets are going to come and, and, and you're going to know they're false prophets because they're really wolves in sheep's clothing. And at some point, House of Prayer, you've got to be able to detect the good from the bad. Every day won't be a flowery bed of ease. And you can't let people speak over your life that if things aren't going your way, God has turned his back on you. No. I had a gentleman that met me on Twitter. That gentleman told me that God had to be an abusive deity. Because God just allows people to hurt. He allows people and he has the power to change their situation. But because he won't change it when we want him to change it, it makes him abusive. And I had to tell the young brother, God don't work for you. We work for God. And God doesn't rely on you understanding what he does, why he does, or how he does. It's up to us to trust him enough to know, even if you don't do nothing else, you've already done enough. Yes, I might be in pain, but he's still God. My situation might not have changed when I wanted it to change, but he's still God. And if tomorrow comes, it's a good possibility tomorrow will be better than today. And I would rather be in trouble with God than not in trouble without him. The reason why First reason why you ought to be able to tell a few people in your life to stop picking on you. It's because you bear good fruit. I'm going to show it to you in the text because I don't want you to think I made this up. The Bible says this. Verse 16. Follow me there. He says, you shall know them by their fruits. He says, do men gather grapes, thorns, and figs of thistles, Verse 17, even so, even every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Now, this is the thing. Some people want to pick on you so that you go back to being who you used to be. They see your good fruit. They're jealous of your good fruit. And they want to stop you from being able to bear good fruit. Okay, I'm going to stop using fruit. Y'all going to make me act ignorant. All right? uh, check this out. Check this out, y'all. Um, when, when people see you on the job, they see you getting a raise. They see you living good, driving good. Your husband treats you good. Your children acting like they got some sense. Somebody say, I need to throw a monkey wrench in the plans because I need your life to be as miserable as mine. Big and them. Women have known this since Eve that men are susceptible to two things fool and women. If you look in the Bible, every man that fell short fell short because his eyes fell on the woman. Samson was strong. Samson was strong, y'all. Uh, uh, he wasn't no big built man. He wasn't no, you know, he didn't look like David. But when the power of the Holy Ghost would come upon him, he had the strength of a thousand men, but he didn't have strength enough to tell Delilah to go back home. David was a mighty man of valor. He, he fought many battles. He, he won lots of wars, but when his eyes fell on Bathsheba, couldn't figure out how to just go inside and go to sleep. And no matter when you are bearing good fruit, the enemy knows how to come in and disrupt what you got going on. Then you get caught up with people who the Bible says 
here in verse 17 don't bear good fruit. He says that they have corrupt fruit because they come from corrupt trees. And I know sometimes the devil will keep you up all night long. And you flipping on the television channel. And you finally make it to the religious channel. And you say, I'm going to just listen to this. Till I fall asleep. And while you falling asleep. Somebody on TV. Talking about if you send me. 99.99. I got this bottle of water right here. That I'm going to send to you. And whatever's going wrong with you. This healing water. It's going to change your life. But you got to send in a donation of $99.99 in faith. That's a corrupt tree. That's a very corrupt tree. Because the Bible tells me this. I can lay hands on myself. I don't need to drink no water. I, I can speak over my own. Like I can pray for me. I don't need nobody to come and shanda, hala, hala over me at all. I can lay hands on myself. Y'all looking at me crazy. I don't have to go to the healing and delivering service. Because God can heal me at my house. I don't have to go to the soothsayers and the tarot card readers. Because the only person who knows my future is God. I don't have to worry about somebody telling me what tomorrow holds. Because I know who holds tomorrow. And I'm not concerned about what you think about me. Uh, uh, he's a holy wrong. Uh, uh, he crazy. He didn't lost his mind. Look, yes, I lost my mind a long time ago, but Jesus found it. Now I have the mind of Christ. What I'm trying to tell you is, you don't have to worry about the corrupt trees when you know you a good tree. Because good trees bear good fruit. The reason you know that you bear good fruit is because you love people you really want to punch in the face. Yeah. yeah. You know you bear good fruit. Because the things you used to do, you don't do them anymore. You're bearing good fruit because when other people in trouble, they run to you. And you feel like I don't have nothing. Why do people always call me? Why are people always seeking me out? It's because they know they can pick on you. You've got something they can't buy out of the store. All right, all right. You've got something they can't find in a boyfriend or a girlfriend or in a husband or in a wife. You've got something that comes from God that's been nurtured by God, that's been tried by God, that is trusted by God. And when people need something, God sends them to you because you're bearing good fruit. Yeah. I'm going to move. Second thing is, your roots are firm in the word of God. Verse 18 says, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Look at verse 19. He says, every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewn down or is chopped down and cast into the fire. The fact that you're still standing today lets me know that you're a good tree. Yes, sir. That's bearing good fruit. Yes, sir. Because you gotta you gotta understand the day house of prayer that the reason why folk are getting cut down day after day after day is because God is doing some pruning in the forest. All right. He says anything that is not kept connected to the true vine, he says he prunes it. He yeah. cuts it away and he tosses it in the fire. Yes, sir. Anything that's attached to your body that's not functioning correctly, the doctor will tell you, I need to amputate it. Because if it stays connected to your body, it's going to poison the rest of your body and you will die. If a tumor gets in your body, they have to cut it out. Yes, sir. Because it can poison your whole body. Yes, sir. And you can die. But then there are those 
will get shot. And because of where the bullet lands, they can't take it out. And they are stuck with the fragment of that bullet in their bodies for the rest of their lives. Because if they take it out, they can lose their life. Their ability to walk, their ability to talk. What I'm saying is when you're good fruit, it doesn't matter what happens to you. That's not what makes you have good fruit. How you exist through what you've been through yes, <laughs> makes you have good fruit. Yeah, you've been through some ups, you've been through some downs, you've been through the fire, you've been through the flood, but that's why you got good fruit. Because now you've got a testimony that it's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do it for you. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. That's your good fruit. That's the testimony that yes, I've been down. But the only way I know that he can reach way down is because he let me get down. So many of our young people are led astray in the 21st century. Because people want to serve a God that works like an ATM machine. Yeah. That all you got to do is punch in some numbers and you're going to be able to get out what you want. But if you don't put nothing in, you can't get nothing out. I say this, and I'm going to say it till God called me home. You can't pimp God. You can't play God. You can't trick him into blessing you. God knows your heart. He knows what he's going to do for you. His grace is always sufficient for you. When you trust him and don't doubt, he'll do anything but fail. But I need to tell you that you can't play God. You can't go to God talking about God, I got good fruit, bless me. Your good fruit shows your good work to other people so that they can glorify your father which is in heaven. I know suffering don't feel good. I know pain don't feel good. I know heartache don't feel good. Feeling lonely does not feel good. Feeling abandoned does not feel good. Dealing with anxiety and depression and post-traumatic stress disorder does not feel good. But God never promised you every day would be easy. But he did promise you he would never leave you. And he would never forsake you. He promised you that he would be a friend that would stick closer than a brother. And sometimes when you're in pain, it's not for your brother to take your pain away. Sometimes it's for your brother to encourage you while you're in pain. See, and we've got to stop fooling one another. Telling one another, all right, it's going to be better tomorrow. No, tomorrow might not be better. All right. But the psalmist told me in Psalm 35, weeping endures for a night. The joy comes in the morning. I don't know how long your night's going to be. I don't know how long this night season is going to be in your life. But what I can tell you is joy is on the horizon. Yeah. I can't tell you how long your body is going to ache. I can't tell you how long you're going to get a negative doctor's report. But what I can tell you is... God, the one who God holds in the hollow of his hand, no devil in hell can pluck him out. And all you got to do right now is learn how to celebrate God in your night season. Praise God in your night season. Worship God in your night season. And that's how you bear good fruit. Lastly, I'm done after this. You got to know that your fruit pleases God. Yeah, you got good fruit. Mm -hmm. You're a good tree because your roots are firmly planted in the word of God. But finally, you got to realize that your fruit pleases God. Verse 20, Jesus said something profound. He says, wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. You don't know the preacher. It's not about how good the preacher preach. It's about how much of what the preacher preaches that he can live. See, if I can't live what I preach, I'm a false prophet. If I can't stand on what I say I believe, 
I am not worthy of standing behind this sacred desk. If I fall out when adverse times come, how can you trust it? And what I found is that every single day there is some preacher, some pastor, some way throwing in the towel because things aren't going his way. See, but you wonder, well, Pastor, how can you be so excited when sometimes when the membership is so low? And that's because I remember Pastor in House of Prayer when I only had eight members. I remember Pastor in House of Prayer and, and trusting God now, on third Sunday, uh, not having enough for the reap and saying, God, I don't know how we're going to pay the rent before the month is out. But on fourth Sunday, God make a way out of no way. And we able to pay the bills and live on for another month. That's why I got faith. That's why I have trust. That's why I have hope. Because it ain't in people. It ain't in your money. It ain't in your pocketbook. My father in heaven owns the cattle on thousands of hills. And all of the silver and all of the gold belongs to him. So if you walk out the door and don't ever come back, God's going to send somebody to stand in the gap in your absence. I know he will. I know he can. And I know he will. See, this is the thing that I know more than anything else in my life that your fruit has to please God. Yeah, it's in verse 21. He says, not everyone that fed unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Your fruit needs to please the Lord. Because there's going to come a day when you have to give an account for your fruit. You're going to have to stand before God and explain why you chose to be who you decided to be. Yeah, you're going to have to find out. You're going to have to tell God. God, you know what? Mm. Evangelism wasn't that important to me. Discipling people wasn't that important to me. 52 Sundays a year wasn't really that important to me. Being faithful to you wasn't really that important to me. Because I wanted to have fun. You know they say YOLO. You only live once. That really ought to scare you. Um, when you take a test, you can redo a test. Right? If, if you go to get your driver's license and you don't pass your driver's license test with a passing grade, you can always come back another day and take the test again. But you only get one life to live. And once life is over, it's over. The Bible says, it's appointed unto man to be born, to die, and then the judgment. You only get one life to figure this thing out. Now, that's why Jesus said to the revelator, John, he who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to his church. Because many times we come in here and we hear the word of God preached and we come in one way and we leave out the same way. But I dare you today, I challenge you today to allow this word to fester in your heart just for a little while. While you are still under the sound of my voice and ask yourself the question, am I really bearing good fruit? Am I producing anything? Am I helping anybody? Can anybody come to me and figure out how to get to Jesus? Because the only reason you're good fruit is because Jesus is still standing with his own wide stretch saying, whosoever will, let him come. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. So we can bear good fruit. In our seasons. That we can lead others to him. That's why he said in Matthew 28. Go ye therefore. He says and go to all nations. He says teach them what I taught you. And baptize them. And he made us a promise. He says lo. I'll be with you always. Even until the end of the age. No matter what you need from God today. 
He's able. He's sitting right beside you. The Holy Spirit is even stirring your heart even right now. I know the Holy Spirit is stirring your heart because you don't have to ask, answer the question today. and You don't have to answer it to me. But you've got to answer it to the Spirit of God today. Now, am I going to yield to God or am I going to keep doing what I'm doing? Am I going to yield to God? Am I going to remain in darkness? Am I going to yield to God today? Or am I going to keep making excuses? God governs every part of your life. You don't have to give me no explanation. But you're going to have to give an answer to God. you got to come while the blood is running warm in your veins. you got to make this time, this opportunity, you got to make the most out of it. Yeah. Because if tomorrow don't come, right. where are you going to spend eternity? My Lord. If tomorrow don't show up, or if tomorrow shows up without you, well. what are you going to be able to say to God? Because you can't blame me. You can't blame your mama. You can't blame your daddy. Your sisters or your brothers. Your aunts or your uncles. Neither your cousins. That's an answer you have to give to God all for yourself. The doors of God's house open. You might be sitting here today saying, Pastor, you said a lot of stuff to me. And I'm pondering a lot of things. What do I do next? And the answer is simple, my brothers and sisters. You've got to yield yourself to the Lord. If you're under the sound of my voice and you know you need a relationship with God, you ought to come.